And this is an excellent example, as chronicled by Chris Dunn in his book, Ancient Technologies of a Machined Surface. Yusuf Awian. These are not markings of any kind of hammers and chisels. No you can way. See that it's been no eaten. way. Look at these lines. Look Same at these striations. Like exactly. Look at these striations. And also the higher parts and the lower parts shows that it's, it was not exactly. all cut at once. Exactly. It was yeah. like. Especially you know, here. This here and here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, here and there. Exactly. You can see where the blade came back. But the, the fact that it's arched yes, makes us wonder what kind of uh, tool was used. The illustrations? Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful pattern. You see the striations running this way, and you see the definitive pattern. I, I can see it, and I can't get it in my camera. Oh, yeah, Going this okay. way. We've got oh, it. Here it is. So it's an arc. So you see this it is arcs curved. like that. Yeah. Curved. Yeah. Curved. Yeah. Curved. Yeah. Curved. And the cutter most yeah. likely yeah. moved yeah. in yeah. this yeah. direction. Has to be machined. Yeah. Cannot be done by the yeah. Hopefully this is not the only example here, but this is an incredible example. And here especially, you see where the tool was cutting higher and here, which is also repeated here. There's a step down from this surface, or this level, to that level, and then down to that level. And it is a beautiful arc. At Abu Rawash, this pyramid, to some extent, was cased or covered in rose granite. The rose granite, like at Giza, came from the Aswan Quarry, which is about 500 miles away. Underneath the granite, and what we can see now, are limestone blocks. There's a lot of limestone in this area, so that could have been quarried, sorry about the fly, quarried locally. But what's intriguing, most intriguing about this site is that we can actually go inside because it's as if the top of this pyramidal structure was blown off by a massive cataclysm. Uh, it wasn't quarried initially, it's being quarried now and has been for probably thousands of years, but it is possible that this was part of the energy grid power plant system of the Boo Wizard um, area, and Boo Wizard means the land of Osiris, which predates the pharaohs and dynasties of Egypt. It's possible that the top, due to destabilization of the entire energetic system, uh, thousands of years ago, possibly at the time of the end of the last catastrophic um, termination of the Ice Age, that the top was literally blown off. And so we get to go into the core and have a look. If you're looking for a good introduction to the concept of the ancient power plants um, of pre-dynastic Egypt, then the documentary series by Carmen Bolter called the Pyramid Code, is a very brilliant start. So you're looking at the limestone interior of the Abu Ruwash Pyramid, and this is the core. And we can descend into the core in this unique structure, unlike the other pyramids, and have a look at the base of it. So about two-thirds of the way down, the ramp in Abu Ruwash. And you can see the limestone blocks here and on this side. But what's more intriguing is the fact that this is all bedrock. So this massive channel 
uh, and presumably the pyramid that was above it was carved straight into the bedrock, which is uh, limestone. You see all the different layers to go down. And then in the core part, again, we see limestone built up and down into the interior. So what we see here is obviously not a pyramid that was open to the air, as some people would think. But this is the lower part of the pyramid construction, which has to be cut in the mound. So this was like the repairing work before they constructed the pyramid. As what happened to most of the sites in Egypt, this pyramid was almost totally quarried. And all what we can see is the underground work, which is still impressive to see this cut in the mound straight ahead like that. And then this big space that we are standing in now was going to be the location where they house the focal chambers of the pyramid on the underground. There could be other focal chambers in the core or in the middle, like the difference between the subterranean and the queen's and the king chamber, so-called, yeah, labeled like that. Abu Rawash is one of the sites that not much people visit because, you know, it's a very, very expensive permission and they think there is not much hieroglyphs here to read or to see, not much decoration. But for people like us who search for the truth, we come here to look about how much work needs to be done even before you start putting your stones. Mm -hmm. And nobody mentions that. Nobody mentions that the underground work of every pyramid complex is as powerful and great as the pyramid construction itself. Mm -hmm. So imagine you're trying to do this cut into that mound with copper chisel and wooden hub. And we can see, of course, that the erosion for thousands of years, but if you look up there at these pieces, you can see how straight this surface used to be. That's right. Mm -hmm. And how can this be accomplished by any primitive tools? The combination of stones we see here is not so much different from any other pyramid complex. We get quartzite, rose granite, basalt, and at least three different types of limestone. One of them can be local to the area, and the two others had to be brought from two different quarries. Mm -hmm. So, and of course, the diorite. There is uh, lots of uh, leftovers from the diorite here after quarrying, of course, which shows that this pyramid was somehow close to the construction of the third pyramid complex, which was also cased almost all of it with granite, and the box inside is made from diorite, and we find lots of pieces from Durit around the, the complex of the third pyramid as well, main Kaura. So Yusuf, would you say that this was a pyramid under construction or a pyramid that was destructed? Many people think that this pyramid was still under construction. All what we find here that the, everything was quarried. We can see the quarrying marking in the blocks inside here. That means the inside was complete. We can see the quarrying marks on the surface. And lots of ribbons from granite and limestone on the other side of the pyramid. And that's probably the confusing idea because when they think that this is the technique of the machining and they look and see it on a slab attached to the pyramid, in their opinion, they will think, oh, it was not finished. Here is the A, the machining marks is still not smoothed out. <coughs> but because we are aware that this is not the original machining and these are the quarrying style of who, those who came to take the stones from the site. So this is why we are confident that this pyramid was complete and then it was quarried just like the other sites. Some other examples in Abu Sir would show that the one me and Stephen went to, it's also the same case, it's only the cut in the mound. It's smaller than this one, but you can almost see the same thing, that some of the pyramids were totally quarried. And this happened also in the Giza Plateau. In many of the mastabas, it was quarried to be taken so they can build with it in, the, in all the kinds. Like, what are you looking at? <laughs> But, but for the record, Yusuf's father, Hakim, believed it was evidence of a cataclysm, that this pyramid was originally blown out or weakened se severely, which would make it easier for later cultures to quarry.